So what I've done here is applied list one is my time to question two. So it goes one through to seven. List two is my values for the atoms. The atoms number times 10 to the power of 10 or whatever it is, nine. And the last one is my LN of my number of atoms. Why have I done that? What's the reasoning behind that? What am I trying to prove with the semi-log plot? When you grow up on plotting here, that's natural log. Well, let's, let's have a look. So if I, if I graph, let's graph, graph one, hopefully that's, what does that graph look like? Hmm? Yeah, yeah, but I've done this intentionally. I wanted to do this one and this two. Why did I want to do this one and this two? Because it's exponential. So initially I should do that to say, well, is my graph exponential? Or is it another type of function? That looks relatively exponential, doesn't it? So the way I provide a semi-log plot to test its exponential nature is I go back, I'm going to click graph two. No, I'm not. I'm going to click exit and I'm going to go set graph two. I'm going to make that list one and list three. So I'm going to graph time versus ln number of atoms. So I go exit, graph two. What does that look like? Does that look the same as what it did before? Looks a bit different. So now I want to see, what am I trying to see? So what's my working over here if I'm, my equation was initially y equals a e to the bx. Why have I done this? Because I want to get it to the form ln y equals ln a e to the bx equals ln y equals ln a plus bx. So what type of function is that? Linear. So I want to take my graph here. Calculate. So did we see that? I'm going to go back and do that again. F1 for calculate once you've got that part set up. F2 for x. And I'm going to click AX plus B. It doesn't matter which way I go. And it will give me this. So on my graph here, I can see that A here equals 0.4812. And if I'm confused about what that means, I see that my AX down here, so it's Y equals AX plus B. I want this light pen. Dark pen. That's my black pen. So I see that Y equals AX plus B where A equals 0.4812. It's probably a good idea to keep a few decimal places here. Why is it important to keep a couple of decimal places? More accurate, and we're dealing with pretty large numbers here, so taking significance is a big deal. So A equals that, and B equals 1.36. What's yours say? Mine says 8.0.02956. Did you log the same function? I'll just come and have a look. Oh. List 1 and 3. Okay. So, that's the first thing. I've got my function y equals a x plus b, where a is this. Now, what does that mean a really equals? in my equation above, in the red equation. That equals the red. My gradient is what? What's the gradient of that line? Yep, so that's my gradient. Wait, so what, what equation do you use? The A into X or the AX plus B? Well, they're all the same thing. It's just I've got them in different represent. I've just naturally logged both sides. 
The reason I've done that is to show that we should get a linear function. Now, it is a bit confusing with the A's and the B's. Our gradient is B, correct? Our capital B, which means our capital B is our little A, which is four point. That makes B our what? What's that supposed to equal? Yep, our C value, which is ln A, correct? So how did you get to that? So I'll go back and do that again. So I've inserted my data, happy with that? I then changed my data set. So I've changed it to graph 2 and I've made that L1, list 1 and list 3. So make sure you're graphing list 1 versus list 3. I've then clicked exit. I've then selected graph 2. Yeah. I've then clicked calculate, which is F1, and I click X. AX plus, AX plus B. That gives me that function there. So oh, I could have selected graph 1 if I wanted. I just wanted to keep graph 1 in case I wanted to go back and look at it. I've also got here, and I'll just make sure I haven't run out of room, which I'm not exactly doing. I've also got here an R squared value of 0 0.980, so it doesn't matter. That can be 0 0.980, so whatever. And what that is, is that is how far, it's called a correlation value, how far away from my line are my points. And the closer that value is to 1, the better it is. So the better your function is. What we can do now is draw that graph and see what it looks like. So that's what that function looks like. It's a straight line. Through our points. The R squared value of 0 0.09806 tells us that we've got a very good correlation. It's a very nice fit. If my R squared value was like 0.86 or something, that wouldn't be as good. Does that mean it's more curvy? It's the distance between the points and the lines greater. So the R squared value measures, wrong side, measures the distance between our points and our line. That's what it's, it's called a correlation. Clear? So, what we've got out of that is that really, and I'm going to do this over here, our equation equals y equals a e to the bx, where b equals 0 0.481525. What's my a? Do we know a yet? That's lna. So we know that lna equals 1.3633, which means that a equals what? e to the power of 1.3633, which equals... Three point nine oh nine. So my function really equals y equals three point nine zero nine e to the power of zero point four eight one two five. We clear with that? And the way we can check that, brilliant, the way we can check that. back to this part here. The way we can check that is I'm going to exit that graph. Would you put x after the 0 0.48? Oh yes I would, sorry. I've dropped my x off. Good call. Yep. I'd graph 1, I'd calculate and I'm hoping I can get an exponential. And that's what we get to prove. So if I move my mouse away, what can we see there? A value is 3.909. What did we get? Our B value is 0.48125. What did we get? Exact same thing. Ah, how did you do that? So R squared value is pretty good too. I'll go back and show us how to check that. Okay, so I'm going to exit.
good, but you need to learn how to semi-log plot as well. So, so if we get because you can semi-log plot with just a, with your hand. You can't. You won't always have a calculator on hand to test if it's exponential, but you can always find a gradient using a ruler and doing it old school. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do this one. Ready? So you remember that I set up my first list as one verse two. So my first list, if I show you here, I'll go to set my stat graph one is list one is my x and list two is my y. Can we see that? I then select exit, because I don't need to go back to that, graph one, and that gives me that data there, which is exactly what we did before. I click calculate, which is exactly what we did before. Now instead of hitting X like I did before, I'm going to hit F6, which takes me to a whole new set of functions I can graph. And the function I'm going to pick is exponential A e to the BX. And that's how I did it. Cool. So is that this one versus two? List one versus two, yep. So list one is X, list one, two is Y. Clear with that? Would you like me to run through those again very quickly? So, so you put, you left your stack graph one as the list one and two. And yeah. How did you change your stack graph two? Okay, so just, I'll, I'll, I'll repeat exactly what I've done. So, to make my list one versus my list three, I click set. I then, when you've got stack graph one there, Adam, look at my screen because you can do it once I've done it. When I've got stack graph one, I go down and hit F2 and make that stack graph 2. And then I go down to my list 3, my, my Y list, click F1 for list, and then I insert the number 3. And then I click exit because it's all set up the way that I want. I then click graph 2, and that gives me my natural log versus my value. I click calculate, I click x because that's the type of function we're creating. Those x, what do you think x squared is going to tell us? Uh, if I had a quadratic, it would give me the, the values for my quadratic function. x, 3 cubic, What do you think med means? Median. Median. Log, x to the 4, power, sine. Off we go. Okay, so I'm going to click X because I want my function in Y equals AX plus B or Y equals MX plus C. Doesn't matter which way. I get my values like that. Clear? And then I rearranged. I rearranged my B value, which was really my LN A value. I rearranged that to find out what my A value is and then sub that into the equation. Y equals A E to the BX. To check that, to get, or to just, if I want to do it a bit more quickly, I would click graph one, calculate, I would go across, now reminder, my graph one, I'll just go back, my graph one is my list one versus my list two, which is my raw data. Cool, so I've just shoved the values in as they go, exit, graph one, calculate, go across, exponential, A, E to the BX, and we get the same values I'll do it again very quickly, okay. That's okay, that's all right. It is quick. Graph, graph one, happy with that. So you got that graph there? Yeah. From there we click calculate. From there we go across to exponential. And we click A, E to the BX. And that gives us our function with our correlation value. Will we have to know this tomorrow? Could do. Yeah. Will we have to know uh, could very well do, yeah. So how do we do part B? Well, why don't we, we can use our exponential model. So I might turn this off, I'll do part B now on the board.